Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are taking our very first look at the brand new tier 7 Japanese light cruiser line, the Shimanto. So, without further ado, let's jump into the commander. We're running Azure Lane Otago. There are other commanders out there that are better potentially than this, but this is the best commander I have for this particular ship, so this is what I'm using. Um, Nikolai Kuznetsov and Francesco Mimvelli with Beyond Range, Arsonist, Punch Through, Fixated, and Refill Station. One of the downsides of this particular uh, build is that you don't get fully packed, so there's no option for it, so we go with Refill Station to get as much DPM out of this thing as possible, even though this is not a DPM cruiser. Uh, yes, it has a lot of guns, but uh, it's got a terrible reload for a light cruiser, which we're going to show off in a little bit. So, let's look at our other build. We're running Aiming Systems Mod 1. You could absolutely decide to go for AA, but honestly, I don't think you need to. Uh, trying to get land as many of these shells on targets as possible is, is probably going to be your best bet. You do not need turret traverse. This thing has stupid turret traverse anyway, plus it's got 360 degree turrets, which means they're always where you need them when you need them. So, uh, yeah, no problem there. We are running uh, Propulsion Mod. You could absolutely swap this out for uh, steering gears. It moves pretty well through the water, um, but with as good as the turrets are that, that turn on this ship, uh, being a little bit more agile might not be the worst thing in the world, but uh, it's totally up to you. Uh, you know Throttle Jockey and with uh, Propulsion Mod is also a great thing. Uh, also, we're running Concealment System Mod because it's obvious... Like, if you're not running concealment, I don't know what's wrong with you. Um, and then, of course, we're running uh, ma uh, Epic Main Battery Mod 3, which gives us even faster reload. Does hurt our tur turret traverse, but when you see how fast our turrets traverse anyway, this does not matter. So, uh, we are fully upgraded, obviously. So, let's get in. Now, you could swap out your Catapult Fighter for Defensive AA. Uh, again, this is just a matter of choice. Uh, definitely don't need it necessarily. But the catapult fighter I use for a lot of situations where I'm like all by myself trying to spot things on the other side of islands and so on and so forth. So personally, catapult fighter for me, but uh, defensive AA is always an option. Uh, this thing does have pretty good AA. So repair party, obviously. Uh, we're running the Italian Unity flag because if you squint just right, kind of looks like a Spartan helmet. And then of course the uh, fleet review camo, uh, which is something that uh, came out for these particular cruisers, I believe. Uh, but yeah, anyway, specs, survivability, 44,500 hit points with a 13% chance, uh, or 13% torpedo damage reduction. So no torpedo damage reduction compared to, um, the other Japanese heavy cruiser line, which always enjoyed a pretty ridiculous torpedo reduction. Main batteries are 150 mil 60 caliber fifth year types. You get 15 of them. Um, this is essentially a slightly worse Suja. If you've ever played the Suja, the Suja is pretty much better in every every respect, except for torpedoes, which we will go over. Uh, but firing range, 17.7 kilometers with a reload of 12.2. And that's with a reload build. This is a reload build ship, and it has a 12.2 second reload. So keep that in mind. Seven second, 180 degree turn time is ridiculous. Uh, they're always going to be where you need them. And then you throw on top of that that they're 360 degree turrets, so they're always where they're needed. HE shell maximum damage is 2915 with an 18% chance to set fires with this build, which is pretty cracked. And then AP shell maximum damage is 3348, which is kind of kind of nice. It's not great, but it, it's it's not bad if you need it. AP shell maximum or eight, sorry, secondaries 100 mm type 98, you get 8 of those reaching out 5.2 kilometers uh, reloading in 2.9 seconds with an HE maximum shell damage of 1700 and a 14% chance to set fires. Torpedoes, you get 610 millimeter triple torpedo tubes. You get 12 of them, so you get, uh, sorry, you get four triple tubes, so two, there are six torps on both sides of the ship. These are turning torpedoes, by the way. They are extremely slow. So they are kind of area denial, or if you're if you're yellowing somebody, they come in handy. But uh, they hit very very hard, as you'd expect from Japanese torpedoes. The reload is 105 seconds, which is pretty ridiculous when you consider the fact that these things hit so hard, um, and you have 12 of them. 
but 20,967 maximum damage with a one and a half kilometer detectability. The one and a half kilometer detectability, I think, is uh, kind of crap. Uh, just due to the fact that these are so slow, you would think these would be a lot sneakier. But then again, they are extremely large torpedoes, so maybe that's why they're so so easy to spot. Um, you, would, I would expect these to be down closer to the one kilometer detectability range, but they're not. Uh, torpedo range is 14 kilometers, but they go 57 knots. So if you're launching 14 kilometers, by the time these get to the end of the, their range, you're probably about to be reloaded. Uh, tour, uh, the AA defense is kind of one of the things this thing shines at. I think this is more of an AA cruiser than anything else. 25 millimeter, 60 caliber type 96 mod ones. You get eight of those doing 14 damage per second, starting at a 3.1 kilometer base range. 25 millimeter type 96 mod one. You get, uh, 32, 50, or 48, 48 of them reaching out to, uh, 3.1 kilometers doing 98 damage per second. 100, and, 100 millimeter type 98, you get eight of those. Uh, that is your uh, dual purpose secondary, reaching out to um, five kilometers and doing 83 damage per second. And then 150 millimeter 60 caliber fifth year types, you get 15 of those, uh, reaching out to uh, six kilometers and doing 78 damage per second. So not the, not the craziest amount of... Um, AA, but it's it's pretty solid and very effective, as we'll showcase in the match coming up. Uh, maneuverability, 34 and a half top, or knots of top speed is pretty average for a cruiser, especially something this size. Turning circle, not great for a light cruiser, 100, 830 meters, but it's a very long ship, so it makes sense. Rudder shift is 8.1 seconds. You could absolutely add some rudder to this thing and get that down to uh, closer to 4 seconds, and it's, it's just a matter of preference. Concealment, Detectability by sea, as you'd expect, is pretty good, 10.5 kilometers. Detectability by air, 6.6 .6 kilometers. Guaranteed detectability is always two, and a detectability while firing in smoke of just 5.8 kilometers, which is absurd for a light cruiser. Um, to put it in perspective, that's better than even the British light cruisers. I think the British light cruisers are um, six kilometers, or 6.1, something like that. Anyway. Stats, 80% win rate in this ship. I've played five battles, so take it with a grain of salt. My accuracy is not the greatest, but that's kind of what you'd expect when you're spending a lot of your time at mid to long range firing very floaty shells at enemy ships who are likely to dodge. I have not had a lot of uh, chances to burn down battleships yet. Um, if I get more games where there aren't five cruisers and, uh, you know, no, no one other than cruisers to shoot at, I could see this thing being even more cracked. But currently... Uh, I've been going up against a lot of um, agile ships, so accuracy is suffering a little bit. Don't let it fool you. This thing is pretty accurate for what it is, uh, as you'd expect out of a Japanese cruiser. Torpedo accuracy is awful, as you'd expect. Again, a lot of area denial torpedoes. I'm just throwing the torps out there long range, hoping that people sail into them. Um, my average damage is 107,000, which is pretty crazy, but not that crazy for a light cruiser. I don't, I don't know what a lot of my other light cruisers that I play stack up to, like Worcester or, or I, I guess this Tier 7, so it would be Cleveland, stuff like that. I'd have to check. Aircraft destroyed, 2.2 per battle. Again, haven't played that many carriers, but when I have, the carrier has not had a lot of success. XP, 2,389, not too shabby. And then potential damage is pretty low because, again, light cruiser, um, agile, out in the open. Even if they do start shooting at you, they're usually not even close if you're if you're trying to dodge. Armor, you don't have any, so uh, don't don't expect it. You have 25 millimeters pretty much everywhere, uh, so overmatchable by 15 inch guns and above. Uh, you don't have any real armor belt there. There is a slight amount of armor belt there, but I think that's actually an exposed citadel. Uh, we'll go over it in a second. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And there you have it. So yeah, it is your exposed citadel. So, just because it looks like you got armor there, don't don't count on it. Um, it is very flat armor as well, meaning very difficult to angle. And because most of it's 25 millimeter, anything battleship caliber and above is probably going to hurt a lot. So be very careful. All right. Overview: big yield, above average torpedo damage. Um, again, you got six torpedoes per side. So pretty pretty cracked torpedoes that are turning torpedoes, meaning you don't have to give up a full broadside to launch them you've got very good torp angles 
and uh, they are very slow. Full circle, main battery turrets can rotate the full 360 degrees. We already talked about that. That is absolutely busted. Uh, it's, it's a great thing to have, especially on an agile cruiser. So if you want to go for steering gears, I completely understand. Nimble aim, above average main battery traverse speed gives an edge in close quarters combat. Uh, you probably do not want to have this thing in close quarters combat because it does not like it. Uh, one of the things we didn't talk about was that these turrets are very susceptible to being knocked out by anything, whether it's HE or AP. They just they get eaten up by any, any damage that comes in their way. The Shimanto. The development of the Mogami-class cruisers into anti-aircraft defense cruisers, which implied mounting dual-purpose 5.9-inch 150mm guns, created in 1944 as the main armament. The mounting of these and 3.9-inch, aka 100mm AA guns, would make it possible to turn these ships into an effective weapon against American deck and ground-based aviation. Year of design was 1944, doesn't say any of them were built. Alrighty, so we're going to be in the Shimanto, we're on Trident, and we're going to have ourselves a doozy of a match. Now, first of all, one of the things I need to point out is that there are a few battleships in this, which is going to go to show you what this thing is capable of against slow ships that can't really do anything. And it's also got a carrier in it, which is going to showcase later on what this thing is capable of when it comes to filling an AA role. So... If you guys are ready, let's get into it. Now, right off the bat, I'm like, all right, let's go ahead and drop some torpedoes off. You know, just blocking the normal routes that everybody likes to take, right? Like, we know that these guys like to go from the middle spawn over towards the right and to the left. So we're gonna go ahead and take a shot at the Anult right off the bat. We've got uh, us already spotted, no big deal. It's carrier game, we're a long ways away from everybody. Likelihood that we take some significant damage here, slim and none. But uh, we are going to go ahead and start targeting the Atlantico. Why are we targeting the Atlantico? Well, there's two reasons. One, he's got prolific secondaries. He's very difficult for battleships to get rid of if he plays correctly. And our shells will absolutely shred his secondaries. Not to mention, if he's running a full secondary build, which most people in the Atlantico are, then... He also has no fight fire with fire, because that commander doesn't actually have it. So, that means we could potentially stack three pl three fires on this man at the same time. Uh, now, I was hoping that we catch this guy with torpedoes here, but as you can see, when you're launching these torpedoes at such long ranges, there are some pretty big gaps in between them by the time they get to those ranges. And when the person that you're launching against decides to go straight into the cap rather than going across the gap like you'd expected, then you tend to end up missing more often than not. But we're going to try to spread the love. We've got our first fire on the Atlantico. We're going to try to go ahead and spread the love to the Colorado as well. The enemy Cleveland is trying to hit us, but let's be honest, good luck firing at a cruiser that's capable of moving at those ranges. We fire a salvo off at the Colorado. We immediately turn back and start trying to focus the Atlantico down some more. Now, we've got to be careful here. You can see I do go ahead and loop back. I'm trying to stay in front of the island. I'm going to go ahead and drop some torpedoes off. Again, this is all area denial, right? If this guy decides he wants to push towards me, we know he's got ridiculous secondaries that are very, very potent. Um, I don't want him to be able to close that distance, but if he does, I want to make sure that he's already got torpedoes en route. But look at the damage that we're going to be able to stack up. Now, remember, this guy has really good armor, has a lot of secondaries that are capable of shattering shells as well. But any of our shells that we manage to hit on him are going to A, be able to cause fires, but B, start knocking out all of those secondaries that he holds dear. 
uh, including those ridiculous uh, heavy cruiser guns that he has on the side of his, his ship. But uh, this is ultimately the biggest fear of any Atlantico player, which is HE spamming cruisers. There, there's nothing more terrifying in an Atlantico than being on the receiving end of an HE spamming cruiser. And the reason being is, A, he gets a nice shot here when I was not paying attention. Gets a Citadel too, which is pretty, uh, pretty annoying. But uh, the reason being that he really doesn't have a counter to us. If we stay at range, his secondaries are useless. Every shot that he takes, he's going to be losing some of those secondaries. And God help him if we start setting fires. And there's a double fire, so he's going to have to double. He's going to have to damage con that. Now look at what he's doing. We're forcing him out of the middle. Now, we do take a couple of hits here from the Cleveland, but look at where those torpedoes are headed. He's going to dodge our torpedoes, but look at the group of torpedoes from the much closer Akatsuki, right? Our friendly destroyer has completely inundated that side. His his one exit route, he goes ahead and gets away. We get a permafire there, but it doesn't matter because he's not long for this world as he ends up getting absolutely yeeted by the friendly Akatsuki. And down he goes. This is the danger of a multi-pronged attack, right? You're, you've, you've yellowed into the center of the map in a very prolific ship. Doesn't matter. The stuff that is going to be able to shoot you back is going to be able to kill you much faster than you're going to be able to do anything useful for your team. You cannot put yourself in that situation this early in the game. Just cannot. It's completely and utterly useless for your team. So they've lost a very prolific top-tier battleship for nothing. And you'll see as the game wears on how much that affects his team. Because now, I don't have to worry about him. So now I'm going to go ahead and double back, try to help my team on the other side. Now, you can see our battleships are hanging tough, but they've got a destroyer on top of them. They're going to do what they got to do to try to help get rid of that destroyer. But we're already on our way back. We don't want to spend the entire game being completely out of, out of play, right? So now that we've gotten rid of some of the, the like nasty ships that have a crossfire, we can focus down the people that don't have crossfires, right? Kid takes a nasty hit here. We go ahead and lob over the top of the island. We are spotted by the, the carrier, but again, the kid is trying to dodge the battleships. He can't pay attention to me. So we managed to lead him using the auto aim over the top of the island, and now we have a Bismarck who is just in the exact same location as the Atlantico was just not too long ago. Prolific secondaries, he's in a very nasty tank build. He does have fight fire with fire potentially, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. He's got two battleships in front of him. He's got a, a potential aircraft carrier, though our aircraft carrier is on the other side of the map, and he's got a prolific fire spamming HE slinger downrange who he can't really do anything about. Now, obviously, we have Peter Bag and a Cleveland in the middle of the map. They could potentially start shooting at me, and you can see I'm always checking my blind spots. After getting clipped by the Atlantico, we got very lucky to survive, uh, but this Bismarck is not going to be so lucky. Uh, he gets to be on the receiving end while he's trying to bow tank everybody. I'm just sitting here just farming him. There's nothing he can do. Every shell that I hit that superstructure with is going to do full pin damage for these HE shells. And you, you could see real quickly how that adds up. And then the fire is on top of it. Now, I'll be honest, the accuracy on this ship is pretty nasty, but it's not as good as I would expect out of a Japanese cruiser. Most of the time, the Japanese cruisers have much better accuracy. Uh, and we are running kind of a, an accuracy build, but we are also firing at 14 kilometers on a bow-in opponent. So trying to land all of those shells at these ranges is probably a lesson in futility, but it doesn't matter if we land all of them because every one of them that hits pretty much damages. We did shatter six shells there as we hit some of the turret faces, but you can see the crew, the carrier starting to attack us as well. We've got our catapult fighter up. We've got our AA going. We modulate our throttle, and down goes the Bismarck. And all of the planes that the uh, carrier sent to us are getting shot down at multiples. Uh, no problem. Like the, the carrier cannot hope to fly into our AA bubble and get away with it. He might get a drop off, but he's going to lose all of his planes in the process. Same thing for any prolific AA ship. And we're not even running defensive AA. Imagine if I was running the defensive AA instead of the, the catapult fighter. It might be the best option, to be perfectly honest. I just like the ability to have that, that dual purpose, right? So it can shoot down a plane or it can also be used to help spot in situations where you're behind an island and you know an enemy is pushing towards you. You could potentially get a fire on your way in. 
you know you know you can use it for recon whereas defensive AA you can't right it's a single a singular purpose that being said uh, we're gonna try to put ourselves in position we know the enemy destroyers here uh, one of the things I didn't point out was that this sonar is very very short duration um, as I push into the cap I know the Akatsuki's there I'm trying to help my teammates by spotting the Akatsuki's torpedoes as we move into the cap problem is it's not really going to help. Now, watch what happens to this Cleveland. Cleveland, also very capable of neutering us with its HE. We only have 25 millimeters, so he's going to be pinning us pretty much any any shells that hit us. Uh, but if you ever get a shot at this thing with a Cleveland at its broadside, you should probably be loading AP. But uh, fortunately, he doesn't. He actually changes what he plans on doing, but look at the amount of damage we're doing to him. Again, we may not have the fire rate that the Cleveland has, but we definitely have uh, really, really disgusting HE that has no problems pinning a light cruiser. Okay, so every single one of these shells, of which we have 15 of per salvo, are going to do significant amounts of damage. Now, Akatsuki realizes he can't really fight us. Our sonar does go down, unfortunately, but uh, we're going to try to put ourselves between the destroyer and our battleship. Also, staying close to my battleship for that AA bubble that we were just talking about. So, as you can see, we're already up to seven, eight. You, the, the, the planes are going to drop much quicker. You've got an AA battleship or a battleship that has a lot of AA. Uh, good shot by the Alabama to manage to punch that Akatsuki in the face. I'm actually going to screw this first shot up. I thought I could lob this island uh, right here with the front guns, but uh, I could not. So this could have been an absolute tragedy. Fortunately for me. Either this guy is, is shooting at the, the battleship or he just completely whiffs trying to shoot me. But look at the railguns as we manage to take him. And he does actually end up killing our battleship. And that's on me. Like, if I had waited just that extra couple of seconds to shoot the destroyer as he comes around the corner, my battleship survives. So his death is on me. But as you can see, dodging the planes, not really a problem when there's nothing else to shoot us. I have an idea of where the, the carrier is. I mean, let's be honest, most of the time, carrier players just run to the back corners of the map. Our carrier player is flying around the normal island that the carrier hides behind. He's not there. He starts looping back towards our side of the map, which is, I don't know. But uh, we go ahead, fire a shot here. We're not detected. So that means he's behind one of these two islands. So we're going to go ahead and start turning in and try to put ourselves in a situation to intercept where this carrier is likely headed, which is to the gap in between the middle of the map. He's just trying to stay out of the way of everybody and survive because carrier player, right? That's what they do. Uh, he's not even going to launch any planes. Like, he doesn't want to let everybody know where he's at. He knows that there's a carrier in the, in the area. He knows I'm in the area. There's possibly destroyers in the area. So if he launches a plane, we're going to be able to immediately know where he's at. We can track where those planes come from and go right to him. So he's going to try not to let that happen because he doesn't want to die. Unfortunately for him, we have all the time in the world. We have plenty of points left to, to get. So we have all day to track him down. And since I already know roughly where he's at, uh, we're going to go ahead and, and go straight at him. So you can see friendlies do call out that he's going towards the mid, uh, which we already knew. So here we are turning in to get our full broadside away. First salvo out, and uh, immediately we're going to start shattering on the deck of the carrier. But as soon as we hit the sides of the carrier, we're going to be pinning. Every one of these HE shells that don't hit the deck are going to pin. So there's no real need for me to go for the AP. The AP in these things can absolutely be good, but at these ranges, I'd most likely be just bouncing and shattering off the side of the carrier because they'll be coming in at a, at a too steep of an angle. So just firing HE at the side of this thing as it turns in you'll, you'll see that I'm trying to keep the shells down low uh, you might think well why are you firing your your, your shells at the the waterline of a ship well in most cases it would be an armored waterline it's a carrier the armor of a carrier is its deck I cannot pin its deck with my HE what I can do is pin the sides of the ship with my HE so I'm trying to purposefully keep those shells down low so that I get as much damage on this guy as possible. And it shows when you look at the amount of penetrations I'm getting versus the amount of shatters I'm getting. As long as I'm hitting the side of the ship, I'm fine. As soon as I hit the deck, it's Shatter City. So little things like that are what, what makes gooder, uh, better players, gooder, gooder players, makes gooder players than others. But 130,000 damage high cow with 3,400 base XP, four kills, top of the leaderboard. Do I, do I like the Shimanto? Absolutely. I think it's a fantastic little AA cruiser. Is it the best? No. 
Uh, do I think it's better than the Suja? No. Um, but I think that if you're a light cruiser player and uh, you run into a lot of uh, carrier players and stuff, there are definitely worst light cruisers to be in. Uh, this thing is kind of a lot of fun, and uh, it has plenty of utility to uh, get you out of a lot of spots. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, and if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.